Welcome to the completion and final review stage of the audit. Now, before we finally sign the audit report, what we need to do is to document those findings during the audit. And of course, we need to communicate these to those charged with governance and management. There are a few ISA that will be covering including the uncorrected misstatement. In other words, we're going to be summing them up all together and to see whether or not it exceeds the materiality level. We also get management to sign off okay, for certain issues. So for example, that they confirm the financial statements as a whole are true and fair, no other frauds and errors that we would expect and so on. We get them to sign off and this is called, according to ISO 580, written representations. And also we need to report to those charged with governance and management. So for example, with regards to communication, to those charged with governance, as well as the deficiencies, internal controls, and we communicate them with those charged with governance and management. So after we've done all of these bits and pieces, we can move on and to issue our audit report and to give the audit opinion. Now, in this recording, we'll be covering the ISO 450, first of all, uncorrected misstatement. So misstatement can either be errors or frauds perpetrated or made by management. Uncorrected means we find out there's a misstatement, they should be corrected. However, management refuses to correct them. Okay. Now, according to ISO 450, first of all, it has an overall definition for misstatement with fraud and error. Okay. So fraud and error happening with regards to figures. So figures, for example, recognition. So for example, you recognize it as an asset or expense. Measurement for example, by what amount, presentation, means where you present the figures. So for example, into cost of sales or other admin expenses. Or perhaps disclosure of a certain element. So for example, uh, we check the disclosure notes and so on. Okay, so the misstatement in disclosure. Now, here there are three types of misstatements here. First, related to, related to factual. So factual means figures are wrong. So due to fraud and error, so in the financial statement element, figures are wrong. So what clients must do is clients must correct it. Otherwise, uh, we will modify the audit report later on. The second type of misstatement is the judgmental misstatement. So in other words, is the accounting estimates that have been used by a client's company. So for example, an example for inventories will be the NRV, net realizable value. Related to a court case is the measurement of the provision liability expenses. So these estimates are made by management and from the external auditor's point of view, okay, we need to check them. However, if we find out there are errors in there, so we cannot force the client to change their estimate. However, if client says that the provision liability expenses are $10, but we, as the external auditor, estimates $15 for the provision liability, what we should do is to record additional $5 into the summary. Summary of uncorrected misstatement. Okay, so uh, we can't force clients to change it, but we will politely say to a client's company that you should change it. However, if they refuse, of course, still, we need to document the $5 in the difference. Okay, so that's what I mean by judgmental misstatement. So in the end, of course, you'll have to correct it anyway. Now, the final one is the projected misstatement. Projected means forecasted. Okay, so given that we found out 
You've got all those misstatements, for example, related to factual, you must correct them. Judgmental, uh, okay, so we record in the difference and to see whether or not those misstatements that we record in total will be exceeding the materiality level. If the answer for that is yes, later on, we will qualify the audio opinion. However, it will also include the forecasted or projected misstatement. So these are the misstatements that we forecast that it might take place in the future. Okay, so it does not necessarily mean that clients has made certain misstatement. However, because we are checking the client's complete financial statements on a sample basis, and this means that we didn't check the whole financial statement in very much detail. And that's why, based on the sample, we find out factual as well as the judgmental misstatement, we would expect other misstatements to take place. So these misstatements are the forecasted or projected misstatement. So projected or forecasted misstatement should also be included in the summary of uncorrected misstatement as well. However, clients are not expected to correct those potential misstatements at all because these are not the misstatements that has already taken place, but we expect them to be in existence, okay, as all the progresses, as all that moves on. So all these statements, of course, document them into the summary of uncorrected misstatement. If we subsequently find out that the misstatement will be exceeding the materiality level, so for example, to p and it's either more than 0.5% of the revenue or more than 5% of the profit before tax, and for the SFP, more than 1% of total asset, and if the misstatements related to related party disclosures or the financial support by the parents company to inject fund into a subsidiary, so the individual transaction here will be material by nature you cannot make this wrong so otherwise we are not testing whether or not it's more than one percent of total asset we are saying that it's material by nature and you need to correct them otherwise we will qualify our audio opinion or perhaps we're going to modify the audio report by giving so for example the adverse opinion or disclaimer and something like that However, if it is by amount, of course, we're going to check the uh, uh, respective financial statements, for example, uh, to PNL and to the SFP, respectively. So we just sum all the three into the summary of uncorrected misstatement and to see whether or not it will exceed the materiality level. It's the summary of uncorrected misstatement. So our responsibilities, we find out those misstatements, we sum them up and to compare with the materiality level, whether or not it's by amount or by nature. Next, we need to communicate these with management. Okay, so for example, Per the IFAS accounting treatment, you should do this, but you didn't do this. And the sort of amendment needed, for example, you need to correct them. And to see whether or not it exceeds the materiality level, it still exceeds the materiality level. Of course, we need to con consider the audit report implications. So, for example, either to qualify the opinion or to modify the audit report by giving the adverse or disclaimer of opinion paragraph. Oh, sorry, uh, uh, opinion. If we subsequently find out that client's company is quite risky, we may need to reassess the overall materiality level and to determine the performance materiality based on the new figure. We also need to consider further actions, for example, and to tell those charged with governance, uh, for example, the audit committees, and also to obtain written representation from management, okay, to get them signed off if they refuse to correct those misstatements. So, We've got four responsibilities and make sure that you are ready. Three misstatements and four responsibilities, including compare with the benchmark and talk with your mouth. OK, 
okay, with management and to reassess the overall materiality level. And also you're gonna consider further actions. So for example, communicating with those charged with governance and obtain a piece of paper that's very important there. Written representation from management. Uh, if they refuse to correct the misstatements and get them sign their names, okay? So this is the requirements according to ISO 450 and correcting misstatements. I hope you're happy and I look forward to seeing you in the next Tavar section then. Bye-bye. APC, accounting for your future.